All right, so the first uh, piece of information we can pull from our NMR is the location of our peaks. So we call this the chemical shift. And it gets this delta, lowercase delta symbol. Um, and the cool thing about this is that it's the same for any NMR. You can get different kind of qualities of NMR, which are represented by how many megahertz they work at. So like 70 megahertz is a really tiny, small NMR. Um, and something like 900 megahertz, you're talking like, you know, million plus dollars for this instrument. Um, and the reason that they're the same is that they're all relative to a reference sample. And this reference sample is tetramethylsilane. which gets abbreviated as TMS. And it's just a silica with four methyl groups. And so basically what we do is we call one of these or all of these H's, they're all the same. We say you guys are at zero and the units here we use are parts per million. Um, and then everything is relative to that. The difference between a 70 and a 900 megahertz is the resolution, right? Um, if you take a, uh, if you have a peak for a 70 megahertz NMR, the peak might look like this. And if you have the same peak for a 900 megahertz NMR, it'll look something like this, right? And so this is useful if you have kind of multiple peaks. When you have better resolution, they won't overlap one another and you can see the differences in them much better. So this chemical shift is equal to the observed shift from the TMS signal in hertz, right? This corresponds to the radio waves used divided by the frequency of the instrument. So for example, um, if your signal is 2181 hertz away from TMS, you would just divide it by the megahertz of your um, for the hertz of your instrument, in this case may be a 300 megahertz or 300 times 10 to the 6 hertz, you would then get 7.27 times 10 to the negative 6. And so this is a ratio, right, because it's hertz over hertz, and so it's unitless. Then we see the numerical value right here up here is 10 to the minus 6, which is to a millionth. And so that's where we get the kind of parts per million, 7.27 ppm. The ppm stands for parts per million. Um, it's not that important, to be honest. Um, what you really want to know is that almost all organic compounds show up somewhere between 0 and 12 parts per million. And then where they're going to show up depends how shielded or deshielded they are. So again, remember, zero is on the right. 12 would be somewhere here over the left. This side over here would be downfield or deshielded. And this side up here would be upfield or shielded. Right, and then we would have some kind of peaks randomly um, about depending on what kind of compound you have. So here's just a picture of an NMR spectra. Again, you see zero starts on the right. This one, this, in this case, they only go up to 11. And then you have peaks. This is actually one peak. This is another peak. And then this is a third peak, right? And so what we can tell so far is that these, this peak over here is more deshielded. Right? Maybe it's next to some kind of um, electronegative elements such as oxygen or chlorine or something like that. 